Welcome to the first episode of The Line, where we're going to be discussing our favorite paintings and the artists who create them. My name is Michael Klein, and this is my friend Louis Carr and Joshua LaRock. We're here to discuss a painting by Thomas Kegler. Uh, he's a good friend of ours. He's from upstate New York. Uh, Thomas is well known for his landscape painting, and we decided to feature his art because it's above and beyond what is being done out there. So this is an opportunity for us as a group to highlight artists and art that we believe in. And so I saw this painting uh, immediately after he posted it online, and we contacted him and asked him if he would be interested in sharing it with us for this show, and he agreed to it, and we're super excited. Yeah, that Instagram post really stood out to me as soon as uh, as soon as it popped up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there was just something about the image that just like really translated well and had that like initial impact, Absolutely. and we we're just like, we got to get it. Yeah. And so then you asked him, and yeah. here it is. So the the initial thing for me, I think, that stood out, because I'm, I think. Just emotionally, I get led by color. So for me, it was the really high contrast of saturated color of the orange and the, the blue, just right off. So that, you, it, it stood out to me, and it drew me into the picture. There just seems to be a lot of great compositional features of the piece. Um, first of all, just thinking about the landscape and the rule of thirds. Um, one, some people tend to put the horizon line more on one of the lower or upper third of a painting. In this piece, it's actually coming straight down the middle. And what he's really using as the lower third is this reflection uh, of the small amount of water that's coming in this little stream uh, in the foreground. And I think that's really important because it's also complementing to the sky. And so, it's always good to put bits of color in different areas of your painting that sort of complement or, or is the same color in another area of the piece. So it does a really good job of creating balance without making it feel like it's sort of a dead symmetry um, in some areas. And then on the vertical third, you have this one sort of lone tree that comes down on the right. And that is sort of counterbalanced with the other trees in the foreground on the left. And they aren't competing with that tree, so it still singles out, but at the same time it creates uh, a good um, sense of balance in the piece. And then that tree line on the top near in the background is this diagonal that just leads your eye straight into that, to that single tree. So you definitely know that that is uh, um, is sort of the the main lead role in this in this painting. It's the only th it's the only thing too that breaks that uh, that top um, portion of the frame. In other words, it's, mm -hmm. it's the only thing that goes off in that direction, which kind of makes it unique and but sort of leads. It's the only thing that leads the, the viewer to understand that there's you know there's the vault of the atmosphere above it. Yeah, no, I, I the idea of an anchor point too. It's just that you enter into the canvas come around, you go towards the back, you have the solid vertical, it's, it's just good composition. It's used often. The title of the painting. So it's, uh, it's the Song of the Whippoorwill. And we had to look it up, but I guess a whippoorwill is... Uh, it's, a, it's a small bird. Yeah. And um, I grew up around them, so at night, in the evenings and at nighttime is when they come up. Yeah, in Mississippi. Um, I think that they kind of cover all the way, sort of on the east coast, all the way south, and, uh, but I think that it sort of cuts off roughly around the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So it kind of tells you sort of where this piece is being set, but it's also what time of day it's being set. Before production started, we were discussing this painting a little bit, and that was one of the, the issues that we were discussing is, is it morning or is it evening, what's going on? And so you had the insight into, well, that it, it has to be evening because they only sing at that time. So that, that, that's fascinating. As far as one of the comments that I was thinking about and kind of discussing that I liked was how Kegler goes back and forth between uh, this sense of kind of a contemporary uh, Impressionist, but then he's very interested in the Hudson River School and glazing, and so that's a very apparent 
in this piece. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what makes Kegler unique. Mm -hmm. So a couple years back, Thomas and I had the uh, opportunity to travel to France um, for uh, a painting fellowship. It was at the Chateau along the south of France. Anyway, and we started talking a lot about our different influences. And at the time, he was really starting to uh, think a lot about George Inez. You know, and so he has that, that sort of like kind of misty emotional quality, uh, the sort of tonality to his paintings. And so you can really see that starting to come out. But I really feel like whereas some of Inez's pictures, for me at least, they, they kind of sort of tend to sort of uh, uh, exit reality just with the way that the, the paint is handled. It's, too, it's a little bit too ethereal to me. I feel like with Kegler's, it's, it's, it's still very much grounded in kind of like mm -hmm. some solid Hudson River School techniques. This, this idea that he's creating uh, an imagined space and he's using all these different very, like, techniques with values uh, and colors to, to, to separate out the distances for us. So uh, I really appreciate that kind of like line that, 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 mm -hmm. he's, uh, that he's walking on. I also like sort of a na the natural rhythm of all of the bushes that he has in the piece. It's so easy to make rhythm feel um, uh, contrived, like mm -hmm. that you, you're putting something in and we have a tendency to make things all spaced equally together. Right. I think he does such a great job of, of spacing everything just right so it feels so natural with all the bushes in the background as well as in the foreground. Mm -hmm. The thing for me that really sets this piece off is that is that line of blue mist in the midground, mm -hmm. that just so it goes you know it goes behind. It's you've got a dark on a light with the with the dark bushes in the foreground, and so that really sets that off. And then you've got the light on the dark with the with the trees behind the mist. But then I just I, it, I follow it along that vertical tree here, and then that that sort of like upturn as it exits the piece. It just there's something about that to oh, me that's yeah. just like so poetic mm -hmm. and, and lyrical. And so then w if that for me it ties it back to the idea of like a song, mm -hmm. you know, the song of the whippoorwill. I was noticing the edges too, just very soft on the left, and very you know even it's through the highlight. Yeah, it, right. so it yeah. pulls you to the right again with that idea of balance and anchoring the composition on the right, mm -hmm. but then you kind of wander to the left side. He also really does a good job of like sort of using the brushwork as, as an abbreviation for the pieces and the leaves of the trees mm -hmm. in the back that are still foreground but in, in a little bit further back. But it actually, you can tell the strokes become more intentional as he starts to uh, make all of the, the, the blades of grass in the foreground. Mm -hmm. That each blade is very, very intentional. And that really doesn't come out uh, it doesn't come across when you're looking at a, a painting through an image. Mm. I was really uh, actually struck by that sort of a thing when we got to see it in person. Um, just in terms of how abbreviated it was and yet how much of this, you know, the detail of the scene that it conveys. I was particularly struck by the reflections of the water um, in, the, in the river here or the marsh. Um, it's actually quite, you know, it looks like you probably laid it on with a palette knife. Yeah. And, and so it has a lot of texture. It catches a little bit of light, so it, you know, it, heighten, it heightens the, the, the wateriness of it, the reflective quality of it. Um, but it's just, it's so, there's just such an economy to that stroke uh, that I thought was just really fascinating. I also really love how it, the, just the absorption of the warm color in the, in the tree line that has sort of that diagonal that comes down and sort of how it's, it's sort of grabbing that, that warmth like a sponge on the, on the, on the limbs. And it really just, um, it adds that color harmony that Michael is talking about with that mist. Uh, that they just, they really, really um, balance each other well. I almost wonder if he accentuated it, emphasized it, mm -hmm. if in, in nature, if the blue would actually be that blue or if it would be just a little bit more neutral. I love the fact that he did mm -hmm. kind of heighten it for that mm -hmm. effect because right. I think it just gives the painting something yeah. special. Yeah, it reads that it's intentional. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there's so, so many times the artist will do something and you wonder, well, did he mean to do that mm -hmm. or did he not mean to? You can tell that he does it enough to make it intentional, mm -hmm. you know. One other element that I wanted to discuss before we finish is the idea of paintings in a marketplace. So this painting is uh, for sale and the, the value that it has is $4,500. And 
we were all kind of surprised at that because we loved the painting so much that I would have I would have given it probably a price tag of 6500 but every artist is different and you never know price points and it's entirely depending on on um, in the end what the artist wants so in other words I attribute a uh, intrinsic value to this actually just higher than what Thomas had, has put on it so that's uh, it's an interesting uh, aspect to it well, it's interesting you say that because like in the economics world, what they would call that is a consumer surplus, okay. which basically means that you value the piece, you value the piece at a certain amount, but the, the consumer has even so much more value in it that you always want to, to sell a work that allows for the consumer to feel like they, they've gotten more than what they had to pay for it because that's why they're buying it. They think that they're gaining a value there's always a thing of, of you want your paintings to move. Like I guarantee we were lucky to get it. As soon, it was still wet when we contacted him. So this is a, a, this is a huge treat for us. Um, but these paintings, I guarantee they move at that price. So it's, a, it's a interesting. Any, any person would be lucky to have this in their home. So this has been uh, an incredible honor for us to be able to share this first episode with you of Thomas Kegler and his beautiful art. Uh, we hope to have many episodes in the future. We ask that you uh, subscribe to us, that you share our, uh, the line with as many friends as you can who you think will benefit from this uh, kind of conversation, this, this dialogue. So we thank you and, and we'll see you again. Thank you.